It's getting easier. Mm. Yeah, I'm well aware that I couldn't have done this like ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like the 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 knowledge, the knowledge base probably just wasn't out there, or might have been, but like it would have been like that was a uh, border, borderline. Yeah, borderline probably Unity and stuff and Unreal ten years ago would have been manageable, <laughs> pretty close to what it is today. But like oh, yeah. before that, it was like Unity was on JavaScript and stuff like that. It was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, um, everything always gets easier. But there's been a huge leap, especially with um, stuff like Fortnite on the Unreal Engine and stuff like that. It's brought a lot of money into it. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, as computers get better as well, it's a lot easier. AI helps too. People use that to teach them. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of things. Yeah, the AI teaching, though, the, uh, the scripting isn't that good, as I found out. Yeah, but you didn't get it to teach you. You got it to just do it for you, didn't you? Oh, uh, one or two things, but yeah, it, it was just lovely. <laughs> yeah, I was come down. It was still teaching me. Like, I, I didn't know how to do it, and then I... It, Gives you the code. I'm like, oh yeah, I get that kind of. But then you're like, dude, it's calling it a million times. Oh yeah, the, co the, like, code, <laughs> the go routine in update. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, like oh, oh, okay. every time you picked up money, it would just break the game. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like, like at this point there is a number of a number of like holdovers that are causing a lot of um, performance issues. Like when I was yeah. playing through it, I there was the um. I don't remember what room it was. I think it was one of the rooms that wants you like skulls Gold or something room. in it, where the Gold frame rate dropped to like the... five FPS. Yeah, man. Yeah. Eat you. Just the <laughs> yeah, that was, and that's just me, but not knowing what I'm doing, kind of right. thing. And that's why I realised that I can't fix or optimise this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's at the time now yeah, where, yeah. that I needed to like bring help in, and I I do have some programmer friends mm -hmm. that kind of like encourage me, like a, a group of friends who were into it but i they've always been into it kind of thing but i've never really cared yeah until yeah. like i did all of a sudden right right and but they were like just, just get it out there just get just start yeah and like optimization comes later someone yeah. else will optimize it and look at this <laughs> yeah someone's optimizing it it's not my, it's mostly not the code either there's other things that were it's like unity itself as well there was like materials for every single sprite which makes it hard to you know manage I'm sure you know all about that sort of stuff, but like the more materials there are, the harder it is to draw things. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm learning every day. Collisions and all that sort of stuff, animations, they're all bringing it down. So it wasn't always just the coding, it was the structure of things as well, um, which we tried with in Unity. So. At the start, I didn't even realize a script could do more than one thing. I was just making a new script for every single well, thing I wanted to do. Technically, <laughs> you should do that anyway, because there's like certain principles you follow and it makes it very... Yeah, but even if, it, even if it did the same thing as something else, I'd just put that in. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, ah. it, it is what it is. Like, I, I'm not ashamed of, like, no. what I learned. I am imagining I'm there's probably some some reuse or remade scripts that are slightly modified where you could have just slightly abstracted it a bit instead of duplicating that work. That's what I'm, I'm imagining yeah, exists yeah. right now. Yeah, there was. Um, we got a new project now, which I started. Okay. Um, and I just put all, over all the art, but I'm doing all the logic and everything else again. So, mm -hmm. um, and I noticed a few things in the old stuff that was um doing stuff like lagging the game. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, there was. We had like event based stuff that was one was like on trigger engine, and then one was like on area entered, and it was exactly the same apart from one line, and it was like. <laughs> Yeah, and it was just like, and then there was also the top-down stuff which had their own version of it too. So it was every time I was looking at a script, I was like, "Oh, why isn't that one working like this one?" And it was that because it was a different, uh, um, different code. But yeah, yeah. And like, if I just wanted to make something, I just like make a collider, make it do it. And then if I wanted something else to happen, I just make another collider and then make that do it. And if I wanted something else in that same room to happen, I just make another collider and then make that do it. <laughs> I didn't understand that you could put yeah, more yeah. than one thing on a collider. And stuff like that, because yeah, I, I yeah, just never yeah. used the program for The room had, um, like, six colliders on it or something. I was coming at it like a more artistic... Like six triggers. I was coming at it like an artistic way of, like, how... Because, you know, I knew how to, I knew how to, use, I knew how to do film, I knew how to do Photoshop, and mm -hmm. I, that kind of stuff. Yeah. That it was like, I understood how programs worked, but I just didn't understand, kind of, like, the workflow of how it worked. Right. Like, and I do now, like... <laughs> like, I'd probably yeah, do yeah. it differently. If I started again, it would be differently. It'd still be, like... Oh, no, it's always, it's always the case. Like, even now, I'm still learning, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone learned. I've only been doing it five years, so. But yeah, you had like a collider on a collider on a collider, and for every collider that's on another one, it's just going to add like another two calls. I think I had 12 and so something. So like it just, uh -huh. you know, like gets to a point where they're all checking each other, then they're all checking each other again in different ways and layers <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah, but my yeah, donkey so. game with my bad coding, people well, all, like got erections looking at it. <laughs> I mean, I still do, but um, <laughs> you should have seen 
in the game like before probably like maybe like three or four months before avcon it was mm. you couldn't even get to the boss so oh, at okay. all. um yeah yeah there was it like but dan, before before that you could yeah dan was like showing me the <laughs> showing me the boss this time and i was like oh yeah i wouldn't mind trying to get to it and i tried playing the game so many times i could just never get there mm -hmm. um one of the reasons was the lag the other reason was like um the game was just really hard at that point so it's gonna go back to being hard though yeah, yeah. That was the Avcom build. That was yeah, like, yeah. you know, we want people to finish it. It's gonna get back. Yeah. It's gonna it's gonna get it. It's gonna have a, a hard shift in hardness. Yeah. Too hard no, not like some other ones. I don't know. We might have a um like hell mode or something where you just right, get right. used to like giant things. Well there's games like um Hades out there which have their like progressive uh difficulty system where you can activate certain things, like oh, enemies have more health, there's a time limit for getting through an area, things like that. That's always you get better stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so for Chad, uh, how did you get yourself involved in like just the game space in general? Like, what made you want to get involved in that? Yeah, so I've played video games my whole life since mm -hmm. I was a kid, since I was about four. Mm -hmm. um, I played Smash TV on the arcade, and so when I first played End of Ember, I'm like. My God, this is a twin stick shooter. There's not enough of these games out there, I remember. And I just really like the genre. Um, but, you know, I basically um, spent most of my life working in universities as mm. an educator, an academic, teaching and learning and all that sort of thing. Mm. And then partway through that, I started a business because I'm like, ah, I'm going to start a business. And the good thing about business is anyone can start one. Mm -hmm. And it's like making a game. You can make it up yourself and figure it out as you go sort right. of thing. And that business was called Game Truck Australia. It was a mobile video game arcade with four widescreen TVs and Xboxes for kids' birthday parties. So I'd rock up out the front of someone's house. 16, up to 16 kids would get in the truck. They'd play Minecraft or Call of Duty or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then they'd leave and I'd drive off and that was the birthday party. Um, and so I learned a I, lot I do like that you specify business. they leave. That's important. They do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did use the joke with the parents that, you know, I'd drive the truck off a cliff for the right price. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, so I learned a lot about business um, from, from doing that. And then a couple of years ago, I was, um, you know, in a contract that wasn't going so well. And I was looking for work and a job came up as games producer trainer at the Academy of Interactive Entertainment. And I went... Uh, this is kind of a dream job to work in games, and I've because I don't have any programming or art skills. It's mm -hmm. like I'd always thought it had been out of my out of my reach. Right. Um, and I went, oh, surely I'll never get the job. But I applied for it and I got the job. So, um, so now I teach people who have finished their game development qualification how to build a studio, yeah. and I teach them about about business. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm located in Game Plus, and so that way I've been in the orbit of studios. Mm -hmm. I've come to realise that actually a really important thing that a lot of studio, that every studio needs is some business now. There's there's a lot on the business side of, you know, um, contracts and finance and, you know, dealing with people and dealing with external stakeholders, dealing with media, um, like, awesome podcasters <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, social media and marketing and PR and all of that sort of stuff is really super, super important for indie <laughs> studios. So it's like, oh, I'm helping. I'm having a wonderful time. It's great. Yeah. Um, from what I've heard from a lot of your students, man, you're, you're pretty awesome at your job. So Yeah, like, I pay them to say that. <laughs> you, you taught my brother and he was just you know, yeah, always telling me how good you were. So Yeah, um, I tried it. And, and a num number of other people too that I know. 